strategies for supporting students. This is the first time that we've done this webinar. Uh, and that's because we're just, you know, really wanting to create opportunities to support educators as they're supporting students. And we've had a couple of updates in this past year. Uh, so we're going to do a little introduction, talk about the process and timeline, why QuestBridge, a little bit about our application, and then next steps and frequently asked questions. You'll see there are some slides that are the same as presentations for students, but there are actually a number of slides that are also created specifically for this presentation that we'll go over in more detail. So to get started, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about QuestBridge and the National College Match in general. We have been around for over 30 years and we've served over 100,000 students by our different programs. Uh, we have over 14,000 students who were finalists that then matched to one of our QuestBridge College partners. Uh, and there are over 30,000 scholars and alumni globally. That number is a really big deal to me. I started with QuestBridge in 2012. Uh, there wasn't an official alumni network at that point, and the number of scholars were significantly smaller. But every year it's grown and grown and grown in terms of the number of applicants, in terms of the number of uh, finalists, in terms of the number of matches. So this is a program that's been around a long time but continues to grow. Uh, and this past year, we had 2,242 finalists who were matched in 2023 with a National College Match Scholarship. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but as again, as I said, we're not going to spend too much time talking about the details. Before we keep going, I did want to share that this presentation is being recorded. And so this presentation will be available on our website after the fact. Um, and for anybody who is joining us, actually, during the presentation, we're going to be sharing this deck with you as well. Um, I'm also excited because Avery, who is my colleague who is off screen, is finishing up um, a smaller presentation that will be available in our resource library that can essentially be a, a shortened version of the National College Match presentation that is available to educators and volunteers who want to share that presentation with students. So that's something we haven't had in a while and we're just working on an updated version of that now. So that will be available too. So there are a lot of resources and that's kind of a theme for the day. We're gonna share information, but there's a tremendous amount of information that's available online. Um, and we, I won't be able to cover every single question or every single piece, but I will do my best. So QuestBridge uh, is looking specifically for students who are either attending high school in the United States, regardless of citizenship status. So that includes students who are undocumented, um, or if you are coming from outside of the United States, maybe you're at an international school, for example, if the student is living abroad, but they are a US citizen or a permanent resident, then they are also qualified to apply. We are looking for students who are strong students academically. Uh, generally, that means students who are earning primarily A's in the most challenging courses available. Uh, we, that's one of the, you know, one of the big sticking points. We are looking for students who are academically and financially qualified for our programs. We are not a high touch organization, although many of you are, uh, but the students who are applying to us are really already ready academically to attend a competitive four-year college. I share here a little bit about test scores. I will talk about that later, but I do want to kind of put a big asterisk in that test score 50% range. I'm sure many of you know, if you have not um, realized already that in the recent past, so pretty much since COVID, when all of the testing requirements have changed, the number of students who are submitting test scores are much fewer. And it unfortunately tends to be students who are submitting, who think their scores are very high. Um, and so we have a lot of students who are not necessarily submitting test scores that actually would be qualified based on their test scores as well. So we're sharing the middle 50% testing range here, but it really is not, um, it is not the full picture. It is only one piece of the puzzle when we are looking for applicants. Students are not required to submit test scores to QuestBridge, and they also are not required to be in this range, but people like information, so we like to share some of that. We're also looking for students who have strong writing. There is an essay in our application, and the majority of our college partners also require some additional information as well, and then also intellectual curiosity and 
as I said, being ready to attend a four-year top college. Students who are a good fit for QuestBridge are not only eligible academically, but also financially. They really do need to hit both of these pieces. So we are looking for students who are typically coming from households have, that have an income of $65,000 or under annually for a household of four. So we do adjust for household size and it is important. We do really mean household size, not who is claiming who on a tax return. Um, but we are looking for students who tend to be long-term low income, uh, who have minimal assets or savings. They may have some extenuating circumstances that they can share in one of the additional additional information sections in our application, uh, but they are they do need to be both financially and academically qualified. And then <clears throat> our application does have a lot of places where they can share more about their experience, about their situation. Uh, they also will be sharing information about their extracurriculars, uh, any additional activities, any additional involvement, either locally or even broadly in their community. Um, and then any additional responsibilities from their family, in their household, a part-time job, all of those things are components of the application that we're looking for students to share in their experience. Um, and then one of the other questions that comes up often is that while the vast majority of our students are first generation, about 75%, that's not a requirement. So it is something that is a commonality, but you will not find that all the way across our applicants. Here are our college partners. We have 52 of the top colleges in the country. Uh, I always have to tout Cornell uh, because that was my alma mater and they just joined along with Skidmore in this past year. So this is the first year they're gonna be part of the national college match process. Uh, but two of our original colleges from our first year are Amherst and Rice. So you'll see there are colleges all over the country. Um, I would be, uh, remiss if I did not say that when I was applying to college, I definitely did not know about all of these schools. And I imagine even students of yours who are well versed and ready to apply to college probably have not heard about all of these colleges as well. So I always encourage students to pick two to four of these schools to look up in a little bit more depth, even if they're not ready to commit to them just to learn, because if you don't know about the school, you can never apply. Um, all of these colleges are committed to meeting 100% of demonstrated need. It is one of the requirements when it comes to being a QuestBridge College partner. And you can find out about all of these colleges in more detail on our YouTube channel and then also on our website. So we're gonna talk about the National College Match. That's really what we're known for. It's our main program. Uh, it is a full four-year scholarship with no loans or parent contribution if a student is matched. One of the biggest pieces here is it involves consideration for early admission for up to 15 college partners at once. I'll talk a little bit about that process in a few minutes. Um, our application is free. So one of the biggest kind of tenets of QuestBridge is that we don't want students who are academically qualified to not apply to colleges because of the financial restrictions. So by having our application be free, the students can cast a wider net, um, can apply to colleges that maybe they haven't been able to visit or maybe that are farther away or maybe that they haven't heard of before because it is free to submit the application through our QuestBridge uh, portal. The application is designed specifically to highlight the unique story and background of our students. Uh, there are multiple opportunities to be considered for admission. I'll talk about that further. And for any student who is accepted as a finalist and then ultimately enrolls in a QuestBridge College Partner, there is they are part of the QuestBridge Scholars Network. And if they graduate, when they graduate, they'll be part of the Alumni Association as well, which is now a very robust network all throughout the country. So this is a quote, uh, this is a new quote that we just pulled from a student who matched this past December. Uh, he shares that before QuestBridge, he was not certain about his college plans and he didn't know where he would end up. And it was thanks to his counselor who trusted him and told him about the program and completely changed his perspective on going to college. And then it talks a little bit about QuestBridge too, but the piece that I wanna share here is I was reviewing quotes for this presentation and over and over and over again, students were saying, I heard about QuestBridge, but then my counselor 
made me realize that it was a real program. I was interested in colleges, but my counselor told me about this way to apply without having to pay um, pay additional fees. I had gotten a brochure about QuestBridge, but I didn't know if it was legitimate. Over and over, and you can replace counselor with teacher, you can replace counselor with community-based organization. Um, over and over, these were quotes that were coming up under one of our surveys that we had sent to students. Um, and it, you know, what you do is really legitimize the opportunities for students through QuestBridge and also not through QuestBridge, but you know, students, especially students where they're the first in their family to attend college, maybe the first in their school to go away to college, having a trusted adult say, this is an opportunity, you are um, a good fit or potentially a good fit for a program like this really makes that student feel um, confident and realize that this is something that they should dedicate time and effort to because it is time and it is effort. I'm not saying it's not, um, but it's well worth it. So we have another quote that we pulled uh, that I'll be sharing a little bit later on, but I could have pulled a million, including specific community-based organizations um, and even students that were mentioning specific teachers and counselors uh, throughout, their, throughout the, um, the process. So now a little bit about the process and timeline. This is a new slide for this year, um, and I think it's really, really valuable. When I've done these presentations in the past, sometimes I found that it was a little confusing to talk about the different components. Um, so I'm going to leave this up for a moment, but I also want to note specifically finalist. Uh, so the definition for finalist is a student selected by QuestBridge as a competitive applicant for the match and our college partners. Finalists are eligible to be considered for early admission and a match scholarship to our college partners. The piece that's not there, which is supremely important, is that when a student is selected as a finalist, they are selected solely by QuestBridge and have not yet had their application read by any college partners. So when a student is selected by as a finalist, it means we are saying they are a good fit to move forward with our program. And if a student is not selected, it simply means that they are not a good fit to go forward with our program through QuestBridge. It definitively does not mean that they are not necessarily a good fit for our college partners, or even that they would not receive aid from our college partners, but that they cannot move forward with QuestBridge. So I shared, we're gonna be sharing this recording, so I'm gonna keep on moving, but that piece in particular um, is something that is always quite confusing. And we're gonna do a timeline, which will help with this a little bit. Uh, so matching, matching is, a, is an early application. It is a binding admission to a college partner. It's one of the pieces that students get stuck on all the time. So I do wanna reiterate, it is binding if the students are ranking colleges. It does come with a full four-year scholarship. The idea is to take the larger financial considerations out of the program are out of consideration while the students are applying. It will include additional funding, uh, obviously for tuition, but also books and supplies, housing and food and travel. And in a little while, we'll go through an example of an actual match package. The match package has no loans and no parent contribution. It's one of the tenants of being part of the match package. We're at the very end of August. Um, so our application is already open. It's been open for give or take a month. Our application closes on September 26th. When students submit an application by September 26th, they're submitting a full college application and what they are submitting if they are accepted as a finalist will be going on to the college partners. One of the pieces that's a little bit different this year, which is in my update, but I wanna share it here too, is for the first time we are sharing upfront that the application is due on September 26th, but the teacher recommendations and the school report from the counselor are due by October 3rd. And I do wanna be very clear about this. There is no extended deadline after October 3rd. In the past, we had kind of a courtesy week. Instead of doing the courtesy week, we are just straight up saying from the beginning, the application is due on September 26th for students, teachers and recommenders, 
um, and counselors have until October 3rd to submit their recommendation or their school report, but that is a hard deadline. And after October 3rd, we will not be accepting any of those materials. So please make sure if you can do it earlier, it's horrible when we respond to emails after that deadline and educators say, I forgot there was an emergency in the family. We can't accept things later than that. So please, please, if you are not gonna be able to submit by that time, let the student know they can find somebody else. On October 10th, students need to submit their rankings. So students are not required to rank schools. The vast majority of students do rank schools and it is the only way to receive that full four year match scholarship. Uh, but it is not a required component of our application. You'll notice that that due date is before students are um, notified if they are a finalist or not. So by October 10th, students need to rank schools. That's two weeks after the application deadline. So students right now should not be planning on determining what school they're ranking or not. They should be working on the application and be worrying about the ranking order and all of that in the end of September, beginning of October. We notify all students as to whether they are a finalist or not on October 16th. Uh, as you can see, as I mentioned, that's after the ranking deadline. Students do have an opportunity to update their rankings and reorder rankings or re uh, remove colleges. So it's better to include a school on their ranking and then remove it. Uh, but they need to submit those rankings before they find out if they're a finalist. On October 16th, if a student finds out they are not a finalist, that means that they do not need, they're not committing to anything. They can move forward with their own application process where they want, you know, likely if they had ranked a school number one or number two, that's where they're going to plan to apply ED or EA, that we want them to do that research, uh, but they are no longer required to move through with the QuestBridge process. Avery is going to put a link in the chat. This is the information for non-finalists. So a number of our college partners will actually still waive an application fee and they will actually still accept the QuestBridge application even for non-finalists. So it goes with this larger idea of, I often say that QuestBridge is not necessarily additional work, it's just earlier work. And this is one of those examples of that. So students sometimes can still use their QuestBridge application and that information will be on that uh, web page. On November 1st, finalists need to submit match requirements. So each college individually, and I'll show you where this is in a minute, each college individually may require additional materials. The most common additional material is the CSS profile. That stu those students will need to submit those documents in order to be a fully complete applicant by that November 1st deadline. Some colleges will require additional information. Sometimes they will require a direct score report, but anything that was submitted to QuestBridge by September 26th will be sent directly to the colleges as well. Um, if for some reason you are not able to get in your teacher recommendation or your school report by that October 3rd deadline, when when educators reach out to us, we share that they can submit that material directly to the colleges as well. All of that is due by November 1st, and I'll show you where that is in a few minutes. Match day is December 2nd, so any student who ranked a college partner will find out on December 2nd if they were matched or not. Everybody gets a notification. For the students that are matched, that is fantastic. Uh, there's a big celebration uh, and there will be some things I'll need to submit. Usually it's, for example, this year, the FAFSA, um, but that's phenomenal. They are now a QuestBridge scholar attending a college partner. And unless they were matched to MIT, which is non-binding, all of the other 51 schools are binding. So if they are accepted as a match scholar, um, if they had any outstanding applications, they need to reach out to those schools and pull those applications out. If they are not matched, they are definitively not rejected. These students, the school still read the application and the school said, hey, 
we're not ready to match with the student at that moment. They are essentially deferred. And I do say that essentially because it varies a little bit from one school to another. So that is important. Um, but they are very much not rejected. Um, and there are additional admission opportunities, which I'll share in a few minutes. Uh, and the student should have a next plan if they are not matched. On December 9th, the regular decision form is due. So if a student is not matched, uh, all the schools that they ranked, uh, that's a binding component. Regular decision is not binding. So that's when they would cast a wider net. They would fill out this regular decision form. It will have all of the information of what they would need to submit for regular decision. And if they, and then their applications will be sent out for regular decision. That is the time when they would be applying to additional non-Quest Bridge colleges as well. Um, and then they'll wait for the spring to find out where they're accepted. Regular decision is not binding. It does often come with excellent aid, really because our students are accepted as finalists because of their financial qualifications as well. Regardless of how a student is accepted, if that student was a finalist and they ultimately enroll in a QuestBridge College partner, they are a QuestBridge scholar and they can and should uh, fully immerse themselves in the opportunities at each of the college partners. So, I'm gonna show you on the next slide, I just wanna give you a little precursor because I'm really excited about this. Um, I mentioned that there are multiple opportunities for admission and that there's a lot of information on our website. So, oh, I'm gonna show you in a couple of slides. I got a little mixed up. This is a new slide that we um, set up specifically for this presentation. So we often get questions about how are educators involved in the process? So. Right now, you can be referring students, as I mentioned way in the beginning of this presentation, your referral is really important because it helps to legitimize the value of QuestBridge and applying to competitive colleges. We get that information and then we share that with the student to, and we share a link where they can start their application. If you are a community-based organization or you're working with students, um, maybe not as the official recommender, please follow up with students to make sure they've connected with their teachers to write recommendations and connected with their counselor, if it's not you, to make sure that they can fill out a school report um, and that they've requested that information from their educators, ideally first by asking them if it's okay for them to be a recommender and then following up to make sure that they received our link. If a, a recommender has been registered and that link hasn't been received, the recommender should reach out directly to educators at questbridge.org with the student's information and we can send that link immediately to the student, uh, excuse me, immediately to the recommender. If you are a counselor um, and you have been registered to write the school report for the student, the school report is a required component of the application. Um, and a, we also request that you submit a school profile. We have thousands of students that are applying from all over the country, and that school profile really gives us a good idea about the student within the context of their school. So if you do have one, we strongly encourage that you submit it, even if it's a very brief version, uh, just to give an idea of what classes are offered, um, a little bit about the background of the student body, that's very helpful. We also, counselors are welcome to submit a copy of the transcript and a copy of test scores. Um, that's something where we encourage you to reach out and speak to your students. Ideally, you will submit a copy of the transcript because that tends to be a more official copy of the transcript that we, when we send them directly to the colleges, that's, a, that's the type of transcript copy they're looking for. Um, as I mentioned, test scores are optional, but they are strongly encouraged. Um, and students or an educator can submit test scores, even if the student is then going to not share those test scores with specific colleges. So that's something the student can make a decision on. For all educators or supporters who are here, um, we encourage you to work with students to determine which schools they want to apply to, either to rank with that binding match or to apply to regular decision or what they will do after they find out if they're a finalist or not. So kind of what's plan A, what's plan B, what's plan C, so that if they don't get the news that they are hoping for, then they have a next plan of attack.
And then lastly, counselors, when a student is submitting their rankings, they're also going to submit a match agreement form. And that is something that needs to be signed by a parent or guardian and also the counselor. And that is to ensure that if a student is ranking 15 colleges across the country, that they have talked through that list with their parent or guardian and then also with their college counselor, mostly because it's, it's, um, it's binding, right? So we want, if a student is going to be um, ranking those schools, we want the student and the important people in their lives to understand that that is a binding commitment and also to understand what additional components the student might need to submit during the supplemental materials phase. So when a student is ranking schools, they can create, they will create a list of up to 15 college partners that they can be considered for early admission and with the match scholarship. The colleges will review all of the applications concurrently. Any student, um, any college that a student ranks will re review that student's application if they are a finalist. And the colleges will not know what order the students ranked the school. If a finalist is matched, they are, excuse me, if a finalist are, is matched, they are matched with the highest ranked school that is also able to match them, um, to match with them. They are matched to a maximum of one school and they are committed to attend the school that matched with them as it is a binding process. So I said MIT is not binding, but all of the other schools are. Now, I do want to share, I'm gonna go over an example. This is an example of a finalist that ranked 15 colleges. And I wanted to share that in 2023, students who matched ranked an average of 10 schools. So we have a lot of students and there were over 2,200 students that matched, right? So we have a lot of students that are ranking a lot of colleges because you're only gonna be considered at the colleges that you are ranking. Here a student ranks 15 schools. Three different schools, Davidson, Case Western, Reserve, and Amherst all come back to Questbridge and say, we would like to match with the student. And the student matches to Davidson because Davidson is number seven on their list and the other schools are lower down. As I mentioned, this order of schools is very important because if a student actually is most excited to go to Case Western, Case Western Reserve, excuse me, because Davidson was higher on their list, that student will match with Davidson, even though Case Western Reserve shared they were also interested in matching with the student. So this order is quite important. Here's an example of the Match Scholarship Financial Aid Package. So at Bowdoin, um, the estimated total cost is $85,100. That's more than the average household income for the majority of our students, the vast majority of our students. You'll see the majority of fees here are tuition and housing and food. And then there are some additional fees that are estimated in particular, travel and personal expenses. Here is how Bowdoin's match package covers these costs. So if a student matched with Bowdoin, they would receive a grant um, or there would be a grant for them for $82,900. And then those additional components, which are mostly books and supplies and personal expenses would be through campus employment, essentially work study, but different colleges use different um, terminology. Uh, if they had a summer job and didn't want to work during the year and covered that $2,200 in costs that way, they wouldn't have to do that. If they wanted to make extra money, they could also have a secondary job, but that is how costs at Bowdoin will be covered. So the big piece here when we're talking to students and we talk about loans and, you know, and costs in the past is that this student is going to be responsible for an estimated $2,200 and Bowdoin has already figured out that that much money can be earned working an on-campus job at Bowdoin during the school year. And all of our colleges have these examples. So here's a, a GIF that um, one of my colleagues created which I'm gonna let it play for a minute, is showing you how you can find, by going to the financial aid tab of each of our college partners, how you can find how these costs are covered. So if a student is saying, I don't want a job on campus, I only want 
full 100% a grant and nothing else. Some of our colleges do offer that. They need to do the research. And if they come out and say, I didn't realize that I might have to do a very small student contribution, it also means that they did not do the research. So please encourage your students to look through this. You'll also see here, there's an application requirements tab, and that shows some components about, we could do the same GIF talking about the different application components. That's where you would find information about supplemental materials um, and different opportunities for admission. So this is a very useful part of our website that I strongly encourage you and your students to look through. So, Here's another um, slide that is new this year. Moving beyond the match, what if a student doesn't rank colleges or doesn't match? So if a student does not want to commit to any of the colleges in a binding, um, in a binding way, they can submit their application to Questbridge on September 26th and not rank colleges. They are not required to rank. It's the only way that they will receive that full four-year scholarship, but it is not a requirement and so if they are not ready to commit to a school or if there is like one school that they absolutely love that's not a Questbridge school, we all know there's more than one excellent college out there for a student, but I also recognize how hard it is to kind of talk through some of that with students. Um, these, are, these are the alternative pathways. So if a student um, ranks colleges, uh, and submits all their materials by November 1st. They need to be thinking about what's gonna happen next. What happens if they're not matched? Will they roll over some of the schools? Denison is one example, Notre Dame is another where they have options to move into early two or options to move into early action if they are not matched on December 2nd. During regular decision, whether the students did not match to begin with or did not, um, or did not rank schools to begin with, the students can apply to a wide range of schools during regular decision, both Questbridge and non-Questbridge schools. Um, and if they are accepted during regular decision, they will receive notifications directly from the colleges with the decisions and aid offers in the spring. They will be able to choose from offers of admission and will typically receive generous financial aid because they were coming through Questbridge and determined to be a finalist. And they will still be considered a Questbridge Scholar if they were a finalist and ultimately enrolled in a Questbridge College partner. Here's an example of regular decision. I'm gonna push through this quickly because I have other things I want to cover. Um, but in this case, a student ranks three schools, Cornell, Emory, and Stanford. The three schools come back to Questbridge and say, we are not ready to match with this student. The student continues to be considered at Cornell, Emory, and Stanford. They add additional Questbridge schools, including BU and Wesleyan. They also add additional non-Questbridge college partners and their local um, or their in-state public colleges. Then in March and April, they receive acceptances from some of these schools. Then they consider what their financial aid packages are, and then they decide what, which school they would like to attend and hopefully tell Questbridge so we have updated material. In terms of the benefits of applying, um, I just wanted to reiterate there are a number of them. This opportunity to be considered at multiple schools um, early is a big one, especially for the students that are you know, ready to attend these colleges. They want to go to a school that supports low-income students. They want to go to a top college across the country, um, and they're ready to go to the best, best college that is a good fit for them. Being able to be considered at multiple schools at the same time is, you know, is really a fantastic opportunity. In 2023, there were 6,683 students that were selected as a finalist and 34% of them matched. So when you think about the acceptance rate of all these individual colleges, that's like tremendous, right? As I mentioned, of students who matched, uh, an, they ranked an average of 10 schools. So they were really casting a wide net of where they would be considered at. Um, and then at least 40% of those who did not match then went on to be admitted to a Questbridge College partner through regular decision or another admissions process. And that number might actually be higher because some of that is based on student reporting. So I'm gonna put this on really quickly. Um, I'm not going to do a poll. I just want to kind of check for understanding. Way back in the day I was a elementary school teacher. Think of this as not an exit ticket because we're not done yet, but if, the question was, are students required to really rank 
colleges in order to be a part of QuestBridge. The option choices, yes, they have to rank. They can rank 15 or a few. It's not required, but if they want to receive the full four-year scholarship, it's required. Um, or they do not have to rank colleges right away. They can wait until they find out if they're a finalist. And the answer is C. They do not have to rank schools, but if they want to be matched, that is the only way to do it with that full four-year scholarship. And they must submit their rankings by October 10th. Another piece here is why is it important to consider match requirements when considering a ranking, uh, creating a rankings list? So some schools have um, additional materials through their own portal that the student needs to submit. Obviously, each of those additional schools having additional materials will take more time. Uh, so it is something that students should consider. And that's because match requirements may include the additional materials um, and they wanna think about how much time they have from up until November 1st, right? Especially after that October 16th notification deadline. And in some cases, it is additional materials that an educator might need to submit as well. In particular, if there were materials that were missing from a student's application, or if the school requires, for example, an official transcript. If a school student does not match with a college partner, hopefully you know the answer to this already. Um, because matching does not mean no, because not matching does not mean no, they can and should explore multiple admission opportunities, including early decision or quest for a regular decision. So moving along, hopefully this is all information that everybody here knows because this is an update, right? This is an introduction to the national college match. So I'm just gonna put this out here. Um, it, QuestBridge application is a full application. It includes all the info, but it also includes all the financial information. We're looking for two teacher recommendations from core subject teachers, one school report. Students uh, submit a transcript for their ninth through 11th grade grades and then self-report 12th grade. We encourage them to submit standardized test scores, any honors, all of their extracurriculars or the most important ones if they have a lot. Um, if they're involved in additional outside of school opportunities, whether it's a community-based organization, they're very involved in their church or their temple or community, anything in the community, um, any home responsibilities, paid work, all of that goes in their application. There are multiple situations where they can share additional information if it doesn't fit, right? Because ultimately, as you know, what they are submitting to us is what is going directly to the colleges. And that's how a college is going to determine if they are a good fit for uh, to add to their college campus. Some changes to the 2024 National College Match. There is one 800 word personal essay. Students often reach out and say, can I reuse an essay from something else? The answer is, does it answer the prompt in our essay, right? This essay should not be about a specific school. That's what the supplemental materials are. Um, and this essay should be how a student um, is presenting themselves because this is what the what QuestBridge and then ultimately what the individual college representatives are going to read to help determine if they want to admit that student to their school. There is no more college preparation section. So if a student is really involved in a community based organization, they should include that under that activities or in the additional information section. Um, and uh, submitting materials. Sorry about that. I shared this already. The deadline for educator submitted materials is Thursday, October 3rd at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. For those of you who have submitted in the past, you know we are answering all of the emails, trying to help out as much as possible, um, but please don't wait until the deadline if possible. Um, and educators and or students can submit test scores. And while it is still optional for QuestBridge, a number of our college partners are now requiring test scores. If the student does not have test scores by our deadline, that is okay. They should put down that they are taking the test and then they should be submitting the test scores directly to the colleges in October. If they're taking tests that the scores will come out in November, they need to reach out directly to the colleges to inquire if that is allowed or not. 
And then there is an optional video. This is completely new for 2024. It is up to 90 seconds and it will be shared with the colleges. We got a really good response. Students seem to really like it. Um, they can, can use it, they don't have to use it, but they do need to understand that whatever they're submitting is being sent to all of the colleges and will likely be therefore seen by many people. Uh, so they wanna be thoughtful about how they're, what they're presenting and how they're presenting themselves. This is a little bit about the community, but I wanna push through. Um, I do wanna point out that we also often get questions about if a student is financially qualified, why should they apply to QuestBridge? And the answer, is that there are a lot of benefits that happen even after the student enrolls in the college partner and even after the student graduates, including now we have a grad match program. Um, we have opportunities for internships um, and volunteer programs. And all of that is for QuestBridge scholars and alumni that had to come through QuestBridge. So it's something that is worthwhile, not only for now, but also in the future. I wanted to share this, I loved this quote. Um, and it just really shouts out multiple um, educators. I don't know if Mrs. V or Mr. F, if you're from Hastings, Nebraska, um, Graydon shouted you out. Uh, these educators and this student's mom really kind of helped support the student all the way through the process. We know how much work you're doing here. We know how much work you're doing even outside of QuestBridge. Um, but as I shared before, over and over, students come out, come follow up and say, these educators are helping me. These educators are supporting me. They let me know that I can do it. They're giving me feedback. They're helping me through the process. Um, that effort is really, really appreciated. So thank you on behalf of Brayden, but also on behalf of QuestBridge. Some next steps, as I shared, you can refer students now. Uh, those op Materials need to be submitted by October 3rd as an educator, but earlier is better if possible. That signed rankings form, if you are a, a counselor, for a, a school counselor, uh, please make sure that that student has the rankings form and everything is submitted by October 10th. That is a hard and fast deadline, just like the October 3rd deadline. Those supplemental materials are due by November 1st. Uh, to reiterate, those materials are due directly to the college partners. They are not due to QuestBridge. They are due directly to the college partners, and it may include score reports, financial documents through the CSS profile, and if a student needs a non-custodial waiver, those are things that the, the they will be submitting directly to the colleges. Um, and then hopefully you're working with your student on a plan for after uh, they've submitted all this material, right? If they're not a finalist, what are they going to do instead? Are there schools that they're applying to? In the meantime, we'll talk about that in a minute and what's going to happen if they don't match. I wanted to, I will go through a couple of FAQs. Um, Avery, my colleague, is going to share all of these links. We have a live QA for educators. Uh, there is two that are coming up in September on different days. Um, you can always reach out to us also, but it's literally questions and answers. And honestly, we have many students that come to these and not as many educators. So pop in, say hello, ask your question. Um, I want to shout out, I don't really use YouTube for anything else. And in fact, I have elementary aged children who I actively discourage from using YouTube. Um, but our YouTube channel is flush with information, not only for applicants, also for educators, also for any high school students looking to learn more about the colleges. Here are some of our recent uh, webinars, including one that just happened yesterday about being an athlete on campus. Um, and we also have our resource library that is uh, much more robust than it used to be. We updated our website. This is one of the components. It includes flyers and brochures, which is one of the most frequently requested items through our support channel. Now I wanted to talk about a couple of FAQs and then I'll hopefully have like two or four uh, minutes to answer some questions live. One of the biggest questions that comes up is about applying early to other colleges. You can find this literally by Googling QuestBridge early application policy, but there are some exceptions. And the biggest exception is a student may apply to their home state public college or university that has a non-binding early application option as long as applying does not violate the college's policies. So I said I'm based in New York. 
So if a student was um, also from New York, they could apply to the local, uh, they could apply to a SUNY or a CUNY or multiple SUNYs or CUNYs, as long as they have a non-binding early application option. That means that if I was ranking schools and I also applied to um, SUNY Purchase, I'm just picking one randomly, and I got matched, I would have to reach out to SUNY Purchase and say, I am withdrawing my application because I have been accepted through QuestBridge. Students cannot apply to public universities from other states concurrently. This is only schools within their own state. So for me, that means I could not apply to UT Austin or University of Michigan as a New York State resident. Standardized test scores, we talked about this already, so I'm gonna leave this as is, um, but please, if you have not already done so, have your students look for the individual requirements for the individual colleges, because even though we do not require test scores, many of our colleges, not all, but many of our colleges now do or are moving in that direction, so maybe they will next year. <sighs> That's a lot. Um, hopefully you're still here. I see there are over 500 uh, participants. So thank you for being here. I am going to take